What is going on everybody? I'm Eric Columbia. Welcome to Toyota Sports Night. Now despite the nasty weather, Mother Nature is throwing our way lacrosse season finally here. Syracuse opening up the season against Siena for a third straight year in the orange. They're dominant in season openers at the Dome. They've only lost once ever, but that against some other school from Albany. SU going with shiny helmets. Maybe it's given them the advantage in this one because they're scoring early and often. Second quarter, Tim Barber getting around the pole. Tries a low shot and tickles the twine. Cuse up 8-0 at that point. A ton of offense coming from Dylan Donahue in this one. Nine points against Sienna. Cuse up 10-0 to start. 10-1 at halftime. Now the orange not stopping in the third quarter. Donahue feeding Sergio Salcedo, the junior, scoring twice off the bench. Syracuse up 12 to 1. The Orange run that all the way to 14-1 before Sienna starts getting some garbage time goals. But Dylan Donahue leading the way as Syracuse starts off 1-0 with an 18-5 win. The million dollar question for Syracuse lacrosse this year is how well are they going to replace all those guys that left on offense? Two out of the three starting attackmen from last season are gone, as well as all three of the starting midfielders. And if today's game against Siena is any indication, that won't be a problem if Dylan Donahue continues to have monster games. The redshirt senior had four goals and five assists in the season opener for Syracuse, proving the difference in a decisive win for the Orange. It felt very comfortable. You know, uh, in practice all week, we uh, take, ter take turns playing, uh, you know, different positions. I think all of our guys feel comfortable everywhere on the field. So. Definitely felt good out there, and it felt good to play game again. The best thing he's doing is, uh, with all those other guys gone, five of the six gone, he's leading this offense and directing things on the field. A lot of people don't see that, so for him to, uh, you know, be our quarterback out there helps things go more smoothly, and, and on, you know, in the game and obviously in practice. Coach Desco says the next step for this offense is to play a little quicker and to get some goals in transition. At the Carrier Dome, Ted Goldberg, Time Warner Cable News. Thanks, ball game. Former SU star Rakeem Christmas playing in his first pro all-star game today. Rock scoring 10 points in 13 minutes of action as the East D-League All-Stars taking down the West. Glenn Falls native Jimmer Fredette taking home the MVP as he dropped a record 35 points. SU, they've won four straight. They dismantled FSU on Thursday by 13. Now the Qs. Trying to keep those hot shooting ways going after nailing 62% of their shots Thursday night. Next up, Boston College and the Eagles. They took one on the chin at the Dome last month, falling by 22. That loss, one of 11 straight for the Eagles, but that doesn't mean BC isn't playing well, especially at home, I guess. BC, they took ninth ranked UNC down to the wire earlier this week. They lost in heartbreaking fashion. Uh, we played really well uh, when they came up here, and, and we're going to have to play that well again. I mean, going to the road in ACC is tough no matter who you're playing, and, and you just got to be ready to play. It's a very tough league, very tough schedule, and you get off a little bit, you can have problems, and uh, it's as simple as that. Tip time for SU at BC is 1 o'clock tomorrow. Bucknell, they're in Hamilton taking on Colgate first half. Off the missed jumper, Colgate, they grab the board, they kick it out to Jordan Robertson, and that was smart because he knocks down the three Raiders, have a 12-point lead. Second half action, this is where the Bison step up their game. Steven Brown, the steal, taking it the distance. He lays it in as the Bisons go ahead by three, but the Raiders, they fight back. Tom Rivard had himself a ball game. Backing his man down, gets the wild shot to fall. 24 points for Rivard as Gate gets the 10-point win, 91-81. Out in Ithaca, former Cornell coach Steve Donahue leading Penn against his former squad. First half, it's Matt Morgan. The kids got more buckets in a rainstorm. I didn't write that line, but I read it anyway. 28 points for him. Later, Robert Hatter doing it himself. A 7-0 run all by his lonesome. He finished with 21, but Penn, they get strong in the paint, scoring 42 points, and they take down the Big Red, 92-84. As for the ladies, they're in the city of brotherly love taking on Penn. Big Red down 11. Second quarter, Nia Marshall hitting the mid-range jumper in transition. Team I, 17 points for her, but Cornell trailed by 16 at the half. Nicole Ashton. 
fading away, skinning it. 12 points, two rebounds for her. Not bad numbers, but nobody could contend with Sydney Stepanovich. 21 points, 12 rebounds. That's a solid double double as Cornell gets crushed. 65 to 50. Let's hit the high school hardwood. First round of sectionals for the Adams and Little Falls. Mounty is taking a three point lead later in the first quarter. Lower wind driving in, putting it up and under. Little Falls up by three. Less than a minute later, Mercedes Smith finding some space, gets the friendly bounce. Nine points, nine rebounds. SAS and the Adams putting together six points in a row to retake the lead. And in the second quarter, Margana Ademi. Open three, connects. Two triples for her. SAS holds on to reach the quarterfinals. They win 53-49. On the boys' side, Solve hosting Lawville in the Class B regionals. Bearcats up six in the second quarter. Eli Wood getting to work. Three ball, touching nothing but the bottom of the net. Lawville within three. Fast forward to the third. Game is tied. Jake Dippled driving. Hits the fadeaway. As Solve retakes the lead on that junior's jumper. Three minutes later, Colin Lecio. He's dared to shoot, and you shouldn't have done it. Solve pulls away and wins big 52-33. Time for a quick break here on Sports Night. When we come back, we're going to hit the ice. But first, here's a look at your weather. And welcome back to Toyota Sports Night. Now, the SU women's hockey team, they swept Robert Morris this weekend. They got a big win on Friday and a big win on Saturday during play for the cure. Wearing pink jerseys to wear, raise awareness for the fight against cancer and the orange, raising awareness for their good play as well. With the sweep, they've earned a bye in the first round of the CHA playoffs. Let's go back to Ithaca. Cornell Hockey trying to get their first win over ranked opponents since December 28th. Taken on Yale in under two minutes to play. Or under two minutes in, I should say. Yale on the power play. And John Hayden pokes home the rebound. Bulldogs with an early lead. Later on, the Bulldogs on the rush, and this one looking all too easy. Carson Cooper beats Mitch Gilliam. It's 2-0 Bulldogs. Fast forward to the second, Cornell getting back in this game. John Nisley taking it adders into his own hands and also taking out the goalie. Goal stands, but the Big Red don't get any closer than two goals. They get doubled up by Yale, four to two. All right, now coming into Saturday's contest in Ottawa, Syracuse Crunch and Binghamton have a combined 12-game losing skid. The b send streak at five, the Crunch seven. One of those ended Saturday, but it was Binghamton. They won 2 nothing in front of their parent club in Ottawa. As for the Comets, they're on the road Saturday night. They're jumping on Lehigh Valley early and often. David Shield and Ronald Keenan's scoring in the first period. They had took a 2-1 lead into the second. Utica would score three straight goals to seal it. New Hartford native Mike Zaleski, he has two assists as Utica wins. Five to two. Let's go back to the hardwood because this might be the best game of the day, no matter what league or sport. Finally, let's get to those highlights. Great action. Duke, Virginia. Wahoos down, but Malcolm Brogdon. The circus shot. That's answered by another. It looks like Grayson Allen traveled, but that's not reviewable. He reviewed to see if he got the shot off in time. He did. Duke escapes. 63-62. Sports night poll time this weekend. We're asking you, what's the number one gift required on Valentine's Day? A dozen roses, some good chocolate, a dinner out, or are you one of those guys that give the rest of us a bad name and you just do all of the above? Vote on our website, twcnews.com, and we will get you those results tomorrow night because it is Valentine's Day tomorrow night, and we air every night, seven nights a week, right here on Time Warner Cable News, beginning at 11.15 p.m. Speaking of Valentine's Day, I probably should go get my wife one. With that said, I'll see you later.